Good afternoon, Susan Corbett, I'm the chair of the South Carolina Sierra Club, and this is kind of our official position. Um, we've had numerous discussions about this over the last many years with our chapter board, and uh, this is an ongoing thing for us. We follow SRS, we follow all kinds of nuclear issues. We were involved in the Barnwell uh, situation where it was tried to be kept open as the nation's uh, nuclear low-level dump, and that uh, we were able to kind of get that contained. So it's something that we uh, stay on top of. Excuse me for rambling, I just made a few notes here that I had to kind of jump around. I would like to speak to the idea that um, people are outsiders if they're not from the Aiken community. The Department of Energy goes to great pains to make sure that the cab is representative of this whole region. There are people on the cab from Aiken, there are people on the cab from Augusta, from Lexington, from Hilton Head, from Columbia, because this is a community that will be affected by things that go on at SRS. So it's very natural and appropriate that people from all over this area would come and make comments and have an opinion on things that potentially could stand to impact them. I know that the Aiken people live closest to it, but all of us, as Ms. Greenlaw said, live are down river of SRS. I live about 45 miles from here. A couple other things. Um, I don't think it's ever too early to say no. It's, I kind of like it equated to when your your child comes to you and they're going to answer something and you know that you're going to say no. You just know you're going to say no. But if you let them argue with you, you know they're going to they're going to wear you down. And they're going to get something that you never intended to let them have because in the beginning you said no and then you let them argue with you. So I am concerned. That if you don't say no now, you're going to, and, and somebody at the last meeting talked about the, camp, the eight camels getting in the tent. Once you let that camel get his head in the tent, it is not far afterwards that the whole camel is in the tent. So just warning to you about that. Um, I'm also very concerned, and yes, there is an incredible amount of expertise at, at Savannah River, but I'm worried that if the spent fuel comes here, it's just going to be too much of a temptation to not start reprocessing. It may end up being cheaper than trying to move it a second time. And that's just going to open up the whole door, the whole can of worms of reprocessing, which is, which is what has created the, the waste that this group is trying to monitor and clean up. So we're talking about another huge generation of legacy waste. Um, someone talked earlier about loss of jobs. Why does all the jobs at Savannah River have to be based around nuclear? Why couldn't we have Santa Fe be a, a hub for new green technologies, solar, wind, uh, geothermal, biofuels? It could be a hub for all kinds of new energy technologies, not just nuclear. Don't get stuck. You're thinking inside the box. Think outside the box here. Um, and you know, I just think it's I, how dare Congress write legislation saying we're going to move this stuff somewhere and there's no exit strategy. How dare they do that? What community is going to buy this pig in a poke? Well, we're going to bring it here, but we don't ask us what we're going to do with it, and there's no funding. Just trust us, okay? I'm sorry, I've been following this a long time. We have seen where this leads. Please do not buy into this. Send a message back to that group of senators that wrote that legislation and say, you go back and write legislation that if you want communities to consider this, there must be an exit strategy, a plan for the permanent repository, and a dedicated funding stream to follow that up. Um, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next person is L. Brandes, followed by Laura Lance. Good afternoon. My name is Elke Brandes. I'm a Georgia resident and I'm associated with Georgia One. Um, I want to make a comment on the monitoring and the health effects that we were talking heard about earlier this afternoon. Um, we heard about uh, a comment that um, there might not be a need of um, to, to start the comprehensive monitoring again in Georgia because the dose releases are so low. Um, but as uh, Courtney pointed out earlier, um, any dose of radiation can cause cancer and other diseases that were not mentioned today. Um, and um, there was actually a study that cancer rates are um, significantly increased in the area around Savannah Riverside and Plant Vogel um, compared to the national standard. So um, my concern is actually that um, even if there's a slight the slightest possibility that SRS makes, increases cancer and makes people sick, um, that should be enough of a reason to find out more about 
about the, the reasons. So um, another thing is that the CDC study that Gail was referring to her, in her talk, um, the Dose Reconstruction Project, um, this study actually did not look at real people. It is a modeling study that calculates how hypothetical uh, families that live and work near and at Savannah Riverside would be affected by radiation. But as I said, this is only theoretically, so what's really needed is epidemiological studies that look at the real people and that look at long-term effects of uh, cancer and other health, healthy 